Consider a case in a reversible adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas when the pressure both inside and out is the same. The work done when the gas expands is dW is minus PdV. Also, under ideal gas conditions, the change in energy dU will be N times the heat capacity at constant volume times the change in temperature. From the first law, dU is the change in heat plus the change in work. But we already said that we're under adiabatic conditions, so dQ is zero. Ergo, NCV dt has got to equal to minus PdV. And solving for dt, we're going to get dt is equal to minus PdV over NCV. Now let's save that aside for a second and differentiate the ideal gas law. Here I've written the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and in the second line I've simply written the derivative of both sides. In the third line I've carried out the derivative. So I'm going to get PdV plus VdP, that's the derivative of this right here, and then I'm going to get nR, where n is moles, r is the gas constant, those are constants, times dt. Now I'm going to substitute in the value that we just derived for dt under the adiabatic assumption. You can see we have this value for dt right here. We're going to substitute it for that dt right there. And so we're going to put it right here, nr times our value for dt. And then we're simply going to cancel out the n terms, and that's going to leave minus r pdv over cv. Now in place of R, let's use R equals CP minus CV. So we're going to substitute in for that R right there. We're going to put the CP minus CV right here. Next we'll divide through by PV and then cancel out terms. So I've taken this expression right here, rewritten it right here, and carefully divided by P times V. First term, P times V the second term, CV times P times V the third time. Then I've come down below and I've canceled terms. So here we cancel the P. Right here we cancel the Vs. All right, then we have the minus CP minus CV times DV because what have I canceled here? I've canceled the P terms right there. And then finally, I'm going to collect these together. So I have CP over CV and CV over CV right there times dV over V, and I've kept the negative sign so far. Of course, the ratio of heat capacities is defined as gamma equals CP over CV. So I've copied down the equation above, dV over V is dP over P, and I'm going to substitute in gamma in this expression right here. So CV over CV is 1, CP over CV is gamma, and the reason I've change the signs is because I've dropped the negative sign right there. Next, I've gone ahead and expanded this particular parenthesis, so we have dV over V minus gamma times dV over V. We can cancel out dV over V from there and from there, since it appears on both sides, and we get dP over P is minus gamma times dV over V. Now we take the indefinite integral of both sides, noting that gamma is a constant, so that the indefinite integral of 1 over p dp is log of p, and similarly the indefinite integral of 1 over v dv is log of v, and since it's an indefinite integral, we're adding a constant. Now we solve for the constant before we begin doing some real algebra. Here I've used the exponent rules to move gamma up to be an exponent right there, from there to there. And then I've used the sum of logs as a product to combine the two log terms and to make it log of PV to the power of gamma. Finally, we raise, raise both sides of this to the power of E, so I get PV to the gamma in place of the log term, and I actually get a different constant, but then a constant's a constant, so what? Now clearly, for the ideal gas isentropic adiabatic process, 
we this is a special polytropic process where gamma instead of being in gamma is uh, CP over CV. This is the shortest derivation of this adiabatic relation that I have seen. There's a much more involved one. Indeed, I have a prior video somewhere that does this the hard way. I'll try to put a link in the notes. If you haven't yet seen the video on polytropic processes, you might want to look at it as it offers some wordy explanations of the normal poly polytropic process. Thank you.